Hello and welcome to another Spirit of Nature art journal tutorial and today I'm choosing to work from my altered book so just finding a blank page to work on uh, before I settle myself down and uh, I've also got some pages from some other books here that just interested me and I thought I'd like to use. I'm just going to cover over that central part of the page with some washi tape just because there are a few holes there from where I tore it out of the book. And I decided that I was going to go with this page here of the trees, this lovely photograph looking up into the trees without their leaves and just deciding how I want to place that on the page uh, and tearing it into a few pieces so that I can use it to almost frame the page. I didn't really know what this page was going to be about when I sat down, the only thing I knew is I wanted to use this page with the trees. So I'm using a matte gel medium just to adhere these together, so I'm putting a layer on the back of the piece I want to stick down as well as a layer on the page I want to adhere it to. This just means I'm less likely to get any bubbles as it dries. And then I pop a layer over the top just to make sure to properly stuck down. And then I quite like the idea of this last little piece here, that kind of sticking up from the bottom, just seemed to fit right the feel of that page. I then want to pull this all together for a couple of reasons. Um, so I'm just using a brayer and some gesso. Uh, that's going to help make the base of these two very different types of paper the same so that my next layers will go on consistently across both pieces because those trees are almost a kind of shiny photographic paper uh, and of course the book page is much more absorbent so that gesso helps to make sure that I've got a standard base for the next layers to adhere to um, and also it just starts to knock back some of the detail so that it starts to merge it together. You can use a dry brush for this as well and working with those trees it started to get me thinking what this page was all about those trees started getting me thinking of family trees and ancestry and so I wanted to use some modeling paste and this stencil with these circles because it almost felt like you know when you see a family tree uh, you've got these photographs of your different ancestors and these circles to me felt like that representation of the different people in our pasts and how we're all connected together. So I'm just using modelling paste, a palette knife and a stencil just to get some, not just these circles on the page but the texture from that as well. Just be careful where I place my stencil as well so that I don't squish the ones that I've already put on. And uh, letting that layer dry before I go back in because I noticed when I was using that stamp that there was the word time and also some clock faces which again just really seemed to uh, to call to me with this idea of ancestors and family trees uh, and how these people's lives who we never even met uh, kind of pull down and start to interact with our own and influence our own. So getting some of those on there. So these first coloured layers are going to be with Distress inks and I've chosen some colours here and I'm just squishing them onto a piece of uh, Perspex there just to get all my colours as a palette and then I'm going to give it a squish with some water so that it moves around a lot more and I'm just smushing my page in it and look that beautiful marbled effect that starts to happen and I'm going to heat set it between each layer and I'm going to continue to repeat that. So putting down the colours I want on the piece of Perspex, spraying it with water so I get some more movement and the reason I heat set it in between is so that these layers build up as a layer because if I'm putting wet on wet it'll all just mush in together and I'll just get one big blue colour that's the same all the way over. So by heat setting it in between, that layer is set and then I can add another layer on top. I'm just going in and adding bits of colour where I feel I want them, drying it, and then again just choosing what I want more of, making that palette work, adding a bit of water, and then just going back in and dabbing that in. If I'm not happy with where something is, I can squirt it with some water and move it around the page before I dry it as well. Just building those colours up in layers. Thank you. 
And now I'm going in with a darker colour. I'm using spray stain now. So still distress inks, but using the spray stain, which is much more vibrant. Putting that on in a few places and then getting my water spray, giving it a good squirt and moving that around before I then go in and heat set it. And you can see that that colour is much more vibrant. And now the same again, but with the turquoise spray ink. And this is where the gesso really comes in, because if I hadn't put gesso layer on, those colours would have sunk straight into the page before I had a chance to really get them moving around with that water. And we would have had a difference between how those inks took on the book page and how they took on those pictures of the trees. So again, just going in with that range of colours, again, another Distress Ink Spray putting that directly on the page. And that last little bottle you saw was a mica spray. So again, Distress as still, so the same brand, but a mica spray. So it adds that real sheen and glimmer to the page. Now having knocked back those trees using first the gesso and then having the Distress inks over the top, I decided I wanted to start to bring those tree branches back out. So I'm just using uh, a Micron pen here. I've chosen it in a dark purple to pick out that color. And I'm just drawing on the branches. It just felt just starting to connect those circles together, that sense of those stories pulling together and the connections between them. And I honestly could have carried on doing that for hours. I love drawing tree branches. And I use the Micron pen because it is water resistant. So anything else I choose to add onto the page now, that it's not gonna move that anymore. That will stay exactly as it is. And I balance that out with another tree branch on the other side. And I'm just coming in now with a stamp. I felt like inside those circles, I wanted something that represented perhaps like the seeds or the berries, that growth of the individuals of our ancestors. So just using archival ink, because again, that is water resistant, so anything else I choose to do on the page afterwards, that stamping isn't gonna go anywhere. And the stamp was actually bigger than, uh, than the space I wanted to put it in, so I just used a bit of washi tape to cover up the bit of stamp, because I didn't want that stamping to go outside the circles. So I just used that to make the stamp a little bit smaller, so that I could just get the ink on the bit that I needed so that I could get that stamp right on the middle. Now I'm going in with a white gel pen just to add a little bit of detail to those berries, just colour them in so that they pop out of those circles a little bit more. shading and highlighting around that word time which at the moment doesn't really pop out from the page so just starting to build on bringing that out from the rest of the page and back in with some of that distress spray again picking out that lovely turquoise color and adding some splatters a few more and I'm just gonna bring in some of the other colors as well so add some of the purple and the dark blue splatters too just to start to bring all those colors together and add some more texture and interest to the page turning the page so that those splatters come from different directions rather than all the same and then I started to think about these uh, 
these fractures of stories that come down through our family tree. We hear these stories that repeat through generations, even though we're not aware of what has happened. And so that, to me, these little strips of paper with these words on, just coming down like stalactites and stalagmites, we'll have some coming up from the bottom, just seem to kind of represent that for me. And this really is what art journaling is all about. It's not just about creating a piece of art and putting it in a book. It's about the process of journaling. Just like if you were doing written journaling, it's about reflecting uh, on what has been going on or things that have happened in your life uh, and sometimes as with normal kind of written journaling you'll have a prompt that you know you want to write about and other times you sit down with a blank piece of paper and just see what comes out. Um, for me I find if I'm journaling using words I'm too much in my head and when I'm journaling through art uh, it, it's that kind of overthinking part of my head gets out of the way and I just find that it flows a lot more. So this got me reflecting on something I hadn't even consciously thought I needed to think about, but clearly it was there in my mind somewhere. So just tearing these little strips to start to balance them on the page and see where they are going to fit. And then getting those stuck down with a little bit of tacky glue, because they're so small, just using a cocktail stick to help me. stuck down I'm kind of not quite sure what to do next so when I'm in that place usually what I do is get my distressings out and start to frame the page partly because when the page is framed it starts to look a bit different uh, but also it gives me that time to interact with the page and start thinking about what needs to come next what the page is telling me it needs so you might notice a gap or an area that needs more color or whatever comes into your mind so I love this process of edging the page because it gives me that time and that space to notice what needs to come next and what needed to come next clearly was um, shading so I've got my intense watercolor pencils here uh, I love these pencils because the colors are so vibrant and uh, I'm just using my watercolor Paint, uh, paintbrush here just to add a teeny tiny amount of water just to blend that colour in. I'm really careful here not to use too much water because my distress inks that are all that beautiful uh, coloured background are water reactive so if I use too much water here I risk moving that bottom layer around as well. So that's why I'm just using a really teeny tiny amount of water just to soften where I've used that darker blue watercolour pencil just to shade those kind of fractures of stories coming in. And then next some stamping. Stamping just helps to add some interest, some detail and some more texture. This stamp literally is just a line of numbers and again I'm using that archival ink which is water resistant but I'm going straight in with a baby wipe afterwards just to before it's properly dry just to take that real kind of harsh brand new stamped feel away from it so it's almost like instantly aging it so it settles back into the page straight away so just putting that stamp wherever I just kind of fancy really where it feels that the page needs that little bit of detail Now taking that same stamp and I've taken it off the block so that I can get little bits of that stamp dotted around the page rather than that perfect uh, outline of that stamp every single time. And again just aging those with the baby wipe. Another stamp here now, this one's kind of a bit like a kind of cracks and crevices, again just adding some texture to that background just dabbing that around, not wanting a clear impression of that stamp, but just dabbing that around, particularly in those different coloured areas because it's spanning those different colours because it just brings them together. Mm -hmm. 
And now it's time for some highlighting. So I've got that white gel pen again and just highlighting certain areas of those circles, just doodling around them where I feel that that highlight really needs to come out. Sometimes just using that watercolour pen just to pull that highlight out. Others just putting it straight on and leaving it as it is. to really help to bring those circles off that background and help them pop. And now doing the same with some shading. So again, bringing out one of those intense pencils. This one is the more turquoise color and just adding the shading in on the other side to the highlighting. So we get that more, that kind of natural balance between where the light might hit it and where the shadow will come. And just using my watercolour pen there just to move that colour around and soften it into the background. Now I want to add some white splatters, some great highlight there. So just a little bit of white acrylic paint and some water to water it down slightly. And then get some of those lovely splatters on the page just to lighten it up. And then it was time to start to bring to life this idea of ancestors and our family trees with some wording. So I decided to use my lovely little stamp set here and again a purple colour of the waterproof archival ink just to stamp my sentiment that I wanted to place on there. It's a bit of a fiddly job, more so just trying to find the right letter, uh, but getting them lined up, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you've got the hang of it, it comes together quite nicely. Not as fast as this, of course. It's the wonderful wonder of editing, as you can speed it up so it looks like I'm doing it super, super fast. Ah, and that's my cat, Woody. <laughs> he decided to come and see what we were doing. So now we've got that stamped. I don't want these bright white words kind of clashing with the page. So I just want to add a little bit of colour to them just to help them settle in to the page. So using that exact same Distress Spray ink I was using before, just putting a light wash over the top and then adding some dabs of it so that where it hits that wet light wash, you kind of have that lovely kind of dark kind of dot that starts to spread, spread itself out. Thank you. 
and a little bit more work just to help them just to settle into the page. So just distressing the edges of that kind of nice crisply cut card with my scissors just to start to age it again so it starts to feel more like the page it's sitting on. to frame them with a nice dark purple distress ink which really helps them to pop and then sticking them down on that page again just using tacky glue and my cocktail stick so I don't have too much glue on there and just mopping up any excess so that it doesn't leave splodgy glue marks on the page and once I've done that my camera gives up um, and so what you miss is me just doing exactly the same as I did with those circles using my ink pens pencils to add some shading and my white pen to add some highlights around those words and here it is the final piece I hope you like it. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope it's inspired you to create your own journal page. And if you've liked it, please do subscribe because there will be more.